So anyway, as Janelle said, I'm a traveler, always have been, uh, U.S. and uh, around the world, all 50 states, all seven continents, 60 countries, a lot of them I'm going back three, four times. The more, the more indigenous, the more I'm attracted to them. Um, and in my travels, a lot of mine are soul travels. Don't know the language. I don't know how to use buses and trains in the U.S., so <laughs> um, I've got myself at times in situations that uh, could have been problematical or even worse than problematical. Uh, but the Holy Spirit has bailed me out several times, and it took me a while to figure out how come am I skating by this when I should have been in trouble? Um, it took me a while to catch on, but I did. Um, and then when it comes to mind, was in Nicaragua. I love volcanoes, active and dead. So I piped ones that bottom of your souls were melting and all this kind of good stuff. But I mean, this was a dormant, a dormant volcano. And uh, two of us were only capable of piping with a guy. So we're going up, and it just started raining. It really started raining. And I couldn't see. I was all fogged up. And one thing I've learned is when you're climbing the mountain, going up is actually easier because when you fall, you fall into the mountain. When you're coming down, you slip and fall. You're in trouble. So I said, and I never, I never turn around. Never. But this time I couldn't see. And every step I made was going to be tougher getting down. So I finally told the guy, I'm going to have to stop and turn around. And he says, Well, you know the trail, because it's pretty imperceptible. I have never gotten lost. Never. Guess what happened? <laughs> yeah. I'm lost in a country, Nicaragua. I'm sitting there, and uh, it's raining. And when I realized I was off the trail, I said, well, I'll just turn around and find it. I turned around, here's all these rocks that have been thrown out with the human There's no way I'm going to find this thing. So I prayed to God. I didn't pray to God to bail me out. I said, help me make good decisions. And uh, a little rivulet will form another rivulet, which forms this, which gets here, which runs into a creek, which runs into a river. People live alongside rivers. So I just did that. I come across an indigenous house. They saw me this way. They didn't clap me on the head. They were friendly. But they knew this much Spanish, and I don't even this much Spanish. <laughs> trying to communicate, trying to say, and this hotel that we left from wasn't even the hotel I was staying at, and I didn't even know the name of it. <laughs> okay. So I thought, how's this going to work? But they kind of pointed me. I walk along another couple miles, come to another indigenous house. Same thing, happy. There I saw horses. I had very wet American money. I could have probably did this. And I'm like, he's got horses. <laughs> I don't know where going. Uh, but anyway, I decided to walk anyways. And I did find this hotel. And, and so everything turned out OK. It would not have been a death thing, but it would have really been uncomfortable and lost in the night out there. Uh, but again, if the Holy Spirit went and guided me, um, yeah. Another one that comes to mind, in Germany. But this was when I was young, like you people. They didn't know English back in my day. Out in, some of the younger people did, but not. But my great 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 grandma was Limit Bokey. Some of you may have heard of Limit Bokey. Anyway, she uh, I was hunting for the place where she stayed at because it was now like a bed and breakfast and a little uh, brew pub. And so I'm going to hunt for this place. I was in a small town. It was at the gas station. It was a young guy who knew English. He kind of pointed me the way. I get out in the countryside. Here's another gas station that I was going to pull up to, but it was closed. It's getting dusk. I sat there. Well. I guess I'm going to be sleeping in the car. But I was young then, so that's not a big deal. But a guy hailed me from a house about 100 foot away. And he must have been the owner of this place. He come up. I showed him this, this thing. He said, oh, yeah. And he's going like this. Well, I figured this meant intersection. This meant left. But he knew after about three of those, yeah, this kid's lost. He doesn't know what's going on. So I just took off. I'm going to be sleeping in the car. I was probably 10 kilometers away. Car pulled up, beat the horn. Here was this guy. He took me, the equivalent to like 30 miles away, there was a billboard pointed. I couldn't shake it. He just pointed, turned around up. I could give him no business. I couldn't shake his hand. What? I just got chills again. But how did this happen? So I resolved from then, I was always a Bud's Bar guy when I was a kid. There would be Germans that would stop by. They wanted to find Mary Stein Shrine. I could just say, turn, 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 turn. I resolved, I will lead you there. Okay? This guy didn't have to do this. So I've had those type of encounters numerous times. And, uh, most people are good, just like if someone would come up to you and need help, you would help, right? So we see on the news all these bad people that clunk you on the head. I'm not being clunked on the head. I'm in <laughs> situations I admit I should have been clunked on the head. <laughs> uh, so anyway, those are just a couple of, a couple of stories of my business. Um, the faith, I mentioned I really spend a lot of time in, in more indigenous things. The faith that I see in Latin America, I mean, they're like 90% Christian, okay? They're practicing Christians. They share, 
By our standards, they have nothing, okay? They're poor, but they share. They're sharing their last meal with you. We may tend to share, but it's out of my access. Well, I got a little extra, you know? It's just a, a, a pure experience. And when I do home stays down there, again, I know this much Spanish, okay? That other one. Uh, they almost all have home shrines. There's always Mother Mary down there. Uh, so I encourage you to travel. Get immersed in the culture. I don't do the uh, do the uh, resort thing. I want to taste and feel the culture. And most people are good. So I would just like to really convey that to you. I'm not saying you can't get in trouble, but hopefully the Holy Spirit stands by you like he does me. <laughs> so, um, I went to a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. And there were some negative things there. I was amazed at the discrimination against Christians in the Holy Land. Uh, that kind of shocked me. But again, I just tried to be really melt with Jesus, and probably the first time that I felt a real presence, we were in a, in a, in a big church, but there was a small chapel on the side of it, and uh, I'm never late for anything, okay? And I don't let people wait on me. I'm there. This time, someone from our small group who was doing this program had to come and yank out. Nick, we're leaving. 15 minutes ago, we're leaving. I was immersed. I felt it. That was my first feeling. And uh, that, that was over, I don't even know if it was in Jerusalem or whatever. Um, but that was another encounter that I had. And as Janelle mentioned, uh, our sister parish relationship, St. Michael's and St. Peter's and Paul, uh, we have a sister parish with San Cristobal down in El Salvador. Wonderful community. Uh, you just feel it. And I actually had now have a family down there. I stay with the same family all the time. I stay in contact with them. Uh, there's a shrine in every house. And again, a poor community, they've been somewhat successful keeping the gangs out of their town. Uh, the priest is just phenomenal. I mean, you just feel it. Um, and we do travel back and forth, COVID has shut that off. It is tough to get them up here because as soon as the, the custom and border patrols say, El Salvador, oh, bad person can't come in. So we do have a difficult time getting, if they're young people, they figure, well, they're just gonna get hurt and they're not gonna go back. These people wanna go home, this is their home. They want to do this, okay? But we've had just great, great experiences down there um, in the Sister Paris. So I would encourage anybody to get involved in that. Obviously, COVID, we, we're, we're not traveling back and forth right now, but um, there are various ones, even if El Salvador is in Grammy. St. Dennis has one in, in out of Brazil, has one in Mexico. Uh, Salina has one. I hope Montezuma has one. They're great trips. And that way, you're kind of a controlled environment. Okay, because in El Salvador, okay, you try to get back into the gated place by X. I kind of go off on myself, but I'm a traveler. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I encourage that kind of stuff. Just you can feel and taste the culture, then. and again, Latin America. It is just it's all about Jesus and Mary. Um, I did make a trip to the border uh, with the Marinals. Uh, we met with Custom Border Patrol. We met with lawyers. We met with facilities on both sides of the border. We met with refugees both sides of the border. Um, Tough situation down there. Uh, there was a Catholic facility that was able to process a thousand refugees a day. Wow. No government money, no taxpayer money. This was all from donations. They were rocking. Uh, ICE or Custom Border Patrol would drop them off. These people used to have a contact in the U.S. While while uh, while the facility was trying to contact, they could sit there and feed them, which they hadn't eaten. They'd take a shower, maybe need some new clothes because uh, ICE, if they have to have a backpack. If they, they might have a sweatshirt in there or something, just ice takes it away from them because it's, it's a biohazard. You throw it away so they can't have anything. That's what they have their stuff in. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've given a talk to the northern part of the Archdiocese, and I'll just read a few things of people who we met down there. There was a family from Michoacan, Mexico, and he owned a body shop. Okay, businesses, but the cartels wanted money from all these small businesses. Well, these guys said, we're gonna, we're gonna stop paying this. Well, they start killing people. So this guy says, well, gee, to save my family, I've got to leave. So he came up to the U.S. The, the lawyer said, very little chance he'll get asylum. Another one, a professor from Honduras. He had a son about 11 to 12 years old. He said, in order to save my son, I had to leave. Used to the gangs would sit there and they would go after teenagers. And a lot of times the teenagers said, I'm just not going to do it. They say, well, they're going to kill you. They're going to kill me. But then what they said to the boy, if you don't join the gang, we're going to rape your sister. They say to the, the girl, if you don't become my girlfriend, I'm going to kill your brother. Well, you're trying to save your family member. But then they figure, let's go down and get the 11 and 12 years old because they're more easy. They don't push back like teenagers. You know how teenagers get. 
You know, it's easier to get. So now, these parents say, I've got to take my favorite lab. I can't let them get involved in that. Also, very little chance they'll get a side there. These are families just like you and me, you know? There was a, uh, a 16 year old girl from Nicaragua. Uh, if you know anything about Nicaragua, they were a democracy, but they were becoming more autocratic. And uh, her and her friends, high school, they started protesting government. The police came out and started killing them. She saw her friends get killed. She was able to get away. She grabbed stuff, the boat, they knew who she was. She got to the US side. They took her back, back away where she had her sweatshirt and sweatpants and stuff like this. They put her in a cage with a bunch of other girls, turned the air conditioning down as low as they could get. Now these people think 70 degrees is cold, okay? They were in it for three days. And uh, then they said, do you want to go home? Some of the girls did. She said, I would be killed if I go home. They know me. The lawyer said, very little chance she'll get asylum. Is she alive today? One of them. Many, many stories like that. Anyway, I could talk about the, that whole border experience for a long time. Uh, but let's move on to my personal encounters with uh, Jesus Mary. More, more happy, more fun. I was in uh, Tanzania, okay, uh, camping out in the bush. You know, they did tell you, okay, you're out in the If you have to go outside and do something, you take your light, shine it around. If you see red, yellow, or green eyes, go back in your tent. If you don't, stand up, do a 360. If you see red, green, or yellow eyes, go back in your tent. Obviously, it's a lion or hyenas. You lose. So I love that kind of shit. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, the last night, we were still camping out, but we were in a gated community. And so there was a lot. So you're just getting together because these people are from all over the world. Okay? I, I seldom actually run into Americans on my trips. But uh, we're sitting there, and for some reason, there was a, just a group of us, and we got talking about Jesus. And there was a guy giving me all the rational reasons why there could be no God. And, this, and all this stuff. And uh, I usually go on the attack pretty strong. Okay? I'm a corporate finance guy. We go. Okay? But here, I was calm. And I wasn't going to be on the attack, but I was explaining, no, it's faith and da da da. He actually got right in my face, like this. He said, why aren't you getting mad at me? And I was wondering the same day of then. <laughs> <laughs> I should be like, okay. Someone touched me. I looked down and said, then when you lit the hall, Jesus was sitting there with a smile on his face. So that was the first time that I saw Jesus. It's right there. I had never been that patient before in my life, that calm. I like it. I kind of doubled a little bit. Maybe part of it's old age, but. <laughs> um, I'm, a, I, I'm a short stop member. Are you familiar with showing stop? So you make a covenant with Blessed Mother Mary. And uh, so I have a home shrine, okay? And uh, even before I was kind of getting it, I sat there and, uh, okay, I'm going to home shrine. I got this corner I really don't use. I'm going to put it up there. And I was getting this feeling it's supposed to be here. She was telling me to put this front and center in my house. So this was the main thing, okay? Okay, I'll do that. Well, now I needed a table to put on there. And then something really was weird. I'm not a shopper. I do not buy things. I love that. I love Ecuador. I just love, just love. I went there and I bought this cloth with tassels on it. I don't even know what it is. And why didn't I buy it? So it was just folded up, just laying there for several years. It fits perfectly on this table. So Mother Mary already knew what I needed <laughs> before I knew showing stuff existed. So I sit there and uh, I'm doing my show and stop short shrine. And I sent for uh, uh, St. Joseph statue to put on there because he's always mean something to me too. So I, I looked all around and I was actually at the shrine over here and I found the St. Joseph statue. So, okay, that's the only one. I turned around to go pay for it. Someone said, me too. So I turned around to see if they were talking to me. There wasn't nobody there. That's kind of weird. So I turned back around and going, me too. So what's going on here? Something I need to. My passion is American Indian history, culture, uh, environmental rights. I was just up this past summer with the water protectors up in Minnesota. Trying, we're still breaking treaties this, to this day. We still break treaties, okay? So this is my passion. So all of a sudden, here was a statue. I would never saw it, of St. Kateri. She was the first American Indian saint back in the 1600s. So she's part of my home shrine. She just looks so long. So yeah, and she's helped me get more and more, more involved in American Indian type stuff. I get up in Minnesota, Wisconsin a lot. And uh, again, trying to protect their rights. Um, another thing about my uh, home shrine, 
I, I say my prayers and do my scriptures here. The Lord's got a light on there. You actually uh, recrown Mary periodically for, say, say, queen of whatever, okay? Something you're praying for, you want her intercession with, you know, to talk to Jesus about. And then one day I looked up and the crown wasn't on there. Well, that's kind of weird. I'm looking around. I see it right on the whole side of my fireplace, standing up perfectly right. I had just bought another candle here, a blessed candle, because mine was about out, and I had it down here. So I understand it was just on double side edge of stick. That can break off. I got it. But it was going to have to drop and hit the crucifix on this side to bounce this way. Okay, that could happen. Yeah. But it's going to have to bounce between St. Terry and this candle. Hold on. Now it's got to kind of do a zigzag. This is kind of weird. And then, you know, when something falls off the edge of here, if I took that pepper shaker, it's not going to be right down here standing up, right? It's going to be at least a little bit this way. It's directly down, standing up. No way. What she was telling me, Nick, I need you to recrown it. I was having a friend who was going to have eye surgery. So I announced her a queen of sight. My friend's surgery went fantastically well. But she told me she wanted to be recrowned. Mm -hmm. Another thing, there was, I have a small, I don't even know what to really call it, but I was going to add it to my shrine. And something told me, you know, this, it's a nice thing. It's okay to have, but it probably doesn't belong in the shrine. Well, I still wasn't catching on. I put it on the shrine. So I'm in bed sleeping, and all of a sudden, crash, boom, boom. Wow. I get up. I had taken this picture when I was in Scotland and blew it up because it, it was fall colors, reflection off the wake, just perfect. So I had this nice big picture class and all this kind of stuff. How it could even bend? It's not that heavy. It bent this nail, fell, and in order for it to do what it did, it had to catch this edge of my fireplace top. You know, like this. It had to hit that edge. I had all kinds of stuff. Didn't touch a darn thing. Had to bounce like two foot here, hit the table that my shrine is on. Did not any statues of, just kick that piece of them along there off on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got it. You don't want it on there. So, yeah, okay, I can't, I'm going to listen to her now. <laughs> Another thing is, uh, as you can see, Mary, Mary has contacted me many times. So I had a, uh, I was hunting for a, a statue of Mary to put outside by my shed at the entryway to my driveway. And so I'm going around on the cast stone thing, so I get to Fort Laramie's uh, trading post. And I see the Mary statues. Okay, I see them. And uh, I uh, wanted to walk past because maybe there's more someplace else. I walk past. Go away. No, no way. I didn't even turn around. I backed up. Because no way. This can't happen. I walk by again. Oh, shit. <laughs> the first time her eyes followed me. The second time her eyes followed me, she smiled. Okay, this is the, and, and there were three of them on the same mode. It was someone in the back. I, she was too big for me. Look, hey, Brother Tom, <laughs> now this has to be the one. I can't leave. She's the one that I have at my shed. Then, some years later, my father, he was only a few months short of 95. In August, he was still driving, but by October. And so he was in the hospital for a little bit and moved to Heritage Manor. And he didn't belong in there. We could not take care of him home. And uh, every morning after I say my prayers and read a little scripture, I go out and get my newspaper. It's maybe 100 foot. And then I stop by, put my hand on Mary's head, and I talk to her a little bit. So 100% of the time, there's always neighbors have lights, and I don't have lights. I don't, I don't see stars. Damn these neighbors, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they always, 100% of the time, there's lights. This time, there's no lights. No lights. Totally overcast. No moon, no stars, but you just kind of go, okay, I walk about 75 feet, you know, and you got it. So I picked up my newspaper, go over and talk to Mary, and uh, I just asked her, I said, Mary, could you let me know if my father's going to heaven? Three houses away. It was like a spotlight. She lit up like this, and a wave came over me. My prayers immediately changed. Take him by the hand and take him to heaven. Within a day and a half, he went to heaven. So, yeah. I love that statue. Okay. Maybe you notice the necklace. The beginning of the necklace, uh, why you not friendly? That's, a, that's an Indian nation where she gave me this. Some other things have been added. And I, I very clearly, Mother Mary told me she wants me to wear this all the time. So I'm kind of getting it now. I'm wearing it, getting a lot. And, uh, but then I was sent to the Svalbard Archipelago. That's north of Norway. I was going on a polar bear expedition little ice cutter ship, 
And I'm going to be out on the deck the whole time. Nobody's going to see this thing. So I didn't wear it. So I'm in Dayton Airport, ready to fly to Newark, get my connecting flight to Norway. Delay, delay, delay. There were storms on the East Coast. So I'm saying, even if they say I'm bored, I'm not going to catch my flight to Norway. I had just called the airlines, and they said boarding. I explained it. She said, you're right. You won't make that. She said, you can fly to Newark, stay overnight, we'll put you on a safe flight to Norway tomorrow. Or you can go back home and start her all over. Well, I'd rather be at home than in Newark. As soon, when I got home, as soon as I opened the door, as clear as I hear any one of you talking, Mother Mary said, did you forget something? That clear. Did you forget? I knew exactly what she was talking about. When I was on that small ice cutter ship, a lady stopped me, and we had an hour and a half conversation about Jesus. Wow. So it's on all the time, unless I'm paddle boarding or at the gym or painting a house. I can be in a bar, I can be at a music event, it's there. And people come up and we talk. So I encourage you, show your faith. You don't have to push it on someone, show it. People will come up and say, yeah, yeah, this works. Show your faith. I, I, it's, it's on all the time. From the time I get up, the time I go to bed. Uh, I want to mention an apparition site I go to several times a year. Uh, it's up just northeast of Green Bay, mm -hmm. Our Lady of Good Health. And Mother Mary introduced me to this one also. And uh, it's, it's actually near Champion, a very small town. But I was there visiting him, just a lovely place. It's, it's going to be, it's not discovered yet, okay? Mother Mary appeared to someone in 1849. There's been a lot of miracles. Matter of fact, I was just up there. When I, when I, anytime I get within five or six hours, of it, I go up there. Anyway. So I'll get this with Janelle. This is just a, a thing that explains a little bit. Maybe people can read it now and then, but okay. it's a. Uh, I was up there on one of my trips, and again, there's a Menominee Indian Reservation, so I kind of visit that. I do other things up there too, but uh, I was up there, and I visited the place. I was on the, on the Menominee Indian Reservation. They have a Catholic church. So I was in there on Sunday morning, and they had invited me to come out and eat with them, which I, I wanted to do, but something was saying, well, no, you're supposed to get back to your Airbnb. So that was kind of weird when I went So anyway, I go back to the Airbnb. I get contacted by Jamie, someone who I know but we've never really had conversation. I know her husband a little bit more. She contacted me. She did not know I was up there. She contacted me about a mother who was having issues with a teenage daughter. <laughs> okay, if you don't even know I'm up here, what the hell do I know about this stuff, you know? Well, <laughs> Mother Mary had been calling me saying, Nick, you need to come back here. Well, I heard okay, I guess I got to go right back there. So I went back there, and I got rosary blast, and blah, 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 and brought them home, blah, 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 and things turned out okay. So but that was weird. I mean, I didn't really even know. She just, I felt a call, and she, she feels things also. She can feel lots of stuff. But anyway, she said, I just felt I was supposed to call you. I know I didn't really know you, but so somebody was telling her to do this. I'm up there another time, and Chris gets on me. Her, I did know a little bit better. She did not know where it's up there. But she contacted me. And again, I had visited the upper set. I had left. Oh, now I feel like I gotta go back. Chris gets a hold of me. Her grandson was having real health problems with intestines and stomach and all this. Okay, well, I went back, got groceries, gave it. He's fine now. So, if you get a chance, if you're ever up around Green Bay, go visit this place. Our Lady of Good Health, be put in Champion, Wisconsin. It's just as you're getting into the Door County area. It's, it's a wonderful place. And it's not discovered yet. Right away, it will become Our Lady of the Lord's Fatima. You know, I want to visit those places too, but then you're going to run into commercial things then too. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. one other place that I just learned about is, uh, let me find it here. Oh, yeah, Sorrowful Mother Shrine up near Bellevue, Ohio. So, you can do a day trip right here, probably two, two and a half hours from here. I just had a brother who has always been helping. Always been healthy, and all of a sudden he wasn't healthy. So he was in the emergency room just earlier this year, and uh, they couldn't find a room for him. He's in the emergency room. You contact the area in Ohio, you contact all Ohio, they start looking in the end. All the COVID people in there can't find it. I got home, I contacted the lady at Schoenstatt who sits there and sends out these missives, emails out to the group. Because we probably have over 500 shrines in, in the area of, of, of show and stuff, home shrines. And uh, that email went out at 10.15. Shortly after noon, a bed opened up in Finland. 
and it had a dialysis center, which is what he needed. He had, he had white blood cells where it broke. It was that for the weak thing and destroyed his kidney. So boom, there he is. So then I sit there and, oh, there's no one from our source. We said, well, I've been there before. And that's only an hour away. So, okay, well, he's in dialysis. That's three or four hours. I'm going to go down and look at this thing. I started down here. Huh, this isn't the place I remember. I have been to a different place. Why did, oh, Mother Mary must warn me. It's a wonderful place. Here I didn't have enough time, but I would visit, I'd drive up and visit my brother every day. So the next time I left early and went there, so I could spend several hours. This is worth a day trip. There is, there is at least 50, if not 100, statues of saints, of Mary, of everything through the woods. It's a wonderful, and I think it is a pilgrimage place too. It's a wonderful place. Go up there, it's only two and a half hours away. It, it's a wonderful, wonderful place. And you can feel things. Um, one thing Janelle asked me about is my vocation. And I told her, I said, well, I don't know that I ever felt one. As, as I was talking to her before, I know that Jesus would hit me upside the head with a two butt form and said, Nick, do this. <laughs> you know, I, I don't have it. But um, I guess what the conclusion I came to is we need to share your grace. This is on all the time. When I'm talking to people, even if it's a beautiful hiking day, God really smiled on us today. Look at the sunset, or, or, or thank you, God, for showing me. I go to Yellowstone in the wintertime. God, thank you for showing me this wolf pack that's about to take down this elk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but bring it out when you're talking to friends, talking to strangers. Yeah, I, 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 I go to a lot of music thing, okay? So I'm listening to some music, and there's someone sitting here. Man, God really gave us a blessing today to listen to this music. Just bring it out. And some people might say, oh, that's kind of weird. Other people, actually, yeah, I can be sitting in the bar, and they'll come up, and we'll have a half-hour conversation. Share what you have. Share the faith you have. Okay? And maybe you don't know, but you planted a seed. That's the Holy Spirit's job to take it from there. Plant that seed. Let other people feel what you're feeling. Okay? We need to be, we're losing a lot of people in the Catholic faith, and it's up to us to sit there and show them the good things. Okay? There have been bad things. Acknowledge that. Got it, got it, got it. But share with them what you have. You know, if it's a t-shirt that I have, I don't wear t-shirts off, but I do have one. I don't even remember what song it is, you know. But I wear it periodically. Just someone, gee, actually, where ring is? And actually, we were at a Harley Davidson thing I wear, but Harley Davidson, where I have a ring that has the Our Father on it. <laughs> okay, I've met at a Harley event. Um, anyway, guys, done, done, done. If you have questions, <laughs> I, I'm just, I, I feel very blessed by experiences I've had. And it's taken me a while to, you know, first of all, I was thinking I was feeling things, but I wasn't sure. Now, okay, you got me. And Mary, Mary is my intercessor. Mm -hmm. She works. So, yes? So, what made you decide to start traveling? And I guess, was it then while you're traveling that you started feeling like you were seeing, not seeing apparitions, but seeing miracles being worked by um, Mary? I've always been adventurous from the wee ones. I would be the one that would disappear in the woods. Huh, where's my four-year-old son at? Okay, so I boys, and I, I stretched boundaries, uh, and I wouldn't get hurt, but even when I got hurt, I repaired like this. So I just, yeah, I, I, I did, and I don't really have family or friends who do what I do, because I do do edge things. I'm a dog sledder. I'm, I just, you know, I just a lot of different stuff, and uh, I'm comfortable doing that. Uh, so I've always just done it, and then in, in the I would lose a lot of time in these foreign countries because I, get, I don't know the language. Again, I, as I said, I don't know how to use buses and this kind of stuff. But then G Adventures started a, a new type of travel back in the mid-1990s. Your small group, you use 8 to 12. You do homestays. They, they set their money. They, want, they, don't, they don't do change. They want the money to stay right in here. That's all my logistical problem. Okay, they handle all that tough stuff. You can still bop out by yourself and do this kind of stuff. But I, I, so I've always been a traveler forever. U.S. And, and outside, but when I started doing, I've always been religious, um, and you know, going to church most of the time, you know, and now all the time in the last 20 years, but I guess after college and kind of was sliding by on things, and I, another story I'll convey is I hadn't gone to a confession for several decades, and then all of a sudden I started getting a feeling I should, I was nervous, gosh, you asked me if I'll grab him on that confession was like three decades ago, <laughs> you know, so that's a little worth his first words, welcome back. I still get chills. But, but anyway, as far as, as far as Jesus, I, I, you know, I've, always, I've always chatted with Jesus and thanked Jesus even when I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, I would say my travels, like I say, the Nicaragua, 
I start to, this can't, I can't just be, and I've had some, inter, I've been in, in some problematical things. An internal cane sometimes is a dang good memory. Somebody else has to do this because I, especially when I was young, I did some dumb things at times, okay? And, and so I said, well, Holy Spirit must have been there. And then I started, when I did my pilgrimage to the Holy Land, I could start feeling things. Uh, another, the Chief Caiaphas house that where Jesus was scourged around there, that also was a place that just, I started to feel it now. I can actually see myself say, all of a sudden it started coming inside of me. And I'm saying, yeah, this is comfortable. This is, I like this. And, and again, hands on the when I was peaceful, I like being peaceful and stuff now, you know? And, uh, and now Mother Mary's just got me. The show and stop thing, yeah, I would highly recommend you know, show and stop. I mean, if Mother Mary is someone who draws you, and, and it's vibrant here, we were actually going to get, there's only 11, 11 of the shrines in, in the United States, and one of them kind of went the fun. We're actually getting that, uh, Father Steve Mondike in McCartyville, he's a big pusher of this, and we actually got land up near Botkins that is a Marian site already, okay? And so COVID has put this all behind, but we will, we will get this out. But there's, there's got to be, I, I wouldn't be afraid to say there's 600 home shrines in, in kind of like the land across the churches area here. Um, but yeah, she's got me now. And so Jesus got me. She's my intercession to Jesus. And when Jesus showed up to me at hands and I, I can see it now, you know. So, yeah. I, if, if, and if I have traveled in, in, in and it would have still came to me in the U.S. I am convinced of that. I think it was just, I had to become more aware, more open. Okay, be ready to receive. Yeah, okay. Okay. I had to be more open to receive. So now in the mornings I do I do say prayers and, and, and read some scriptures and you know so I'm more active. I'm trying to say yes when Janelle called it. Yes, say I'm trying to tell myself, say yes. Okay, say yes. And you don't always know, but even after I'm here, I said, Holy Spirit, give me the words to say in front of these people, you know. <laughs> so let's go. So So like I know in El Salvador, the way mass is experienced in the um, like rural areas is a little different than our mass. Like there's dogs running around and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, dogs come in. Yeah. Um, so like in your travels around the world, like how have you either experienced like maybe a feast day or just like the mass or the faith in general, like different than how we celebrate it here? Um, yeah, they all. One thing I like about the Catholic Church is they do kind of put a little bit of the culture in it. And, and with my passion for the American Union, when I'm, when I'm going on the res is around here in, in the U.S., they will kind of adjust it to, to that Indian nation's thing, okay? And so, so that works. But you still follow the same basic stuff. Okay? I can go, I can be in, in, in a country that I don't have uh, Spanish, I can kind of hear a few things, you know. Otherwise, I can, you can still follow a mass. It's still the basic same mass. You got, okay, gee, they stood at a different time. But I, I visit all these little churches around here that I'm retired, you know, like St. Rose's on Tuesday, you know, you know. They all, everybody, especially even Corbett, they would do different things. I would be there. If this parish says there puts masks on, I'll put a mask on. If they don't, I won't. It's their parish. I'm the one just coming in here, okay? And I do the same thing in foreign countries. I just try to follow. They don't mock you. They, they, they're happy to see you. They actually are happy to see you. You're here. And obviously, a lot of these countries come out, you don't find blonde hair. Especially <laughs> my hair, I donate my hair. So if it gets down here, cut them off, donate, boom. So sometimes they say, oh, that's this guy. <laughs> but, but anyway, no, they say, here, you're there. They welcome you, just as you would in your church, right? If you saw someone that doesn't, sometimes you got to be careful. I've seen some people get mad at people that shouldn't be, that they think shouldn't be there. Jesus wants us all. So. But yeah, same mass. You can follow it. You can follow it. Yeah? How often do you travel? Uh, Pre-COVID, I would probably make three to five international trips a year and maybe five or six travels in the U.S. Uh, I did have a global, I'm a, I'm a finance guy, corporate finance, although I, I handle pension funds and stuff like that, so I know investments, but I had a global operation. Um, but I, I, most of my travels were on my own. But uh, again, God bless me. Gee, I've got to go through Asia. Well, the company, I'm going to fly business class over there. And then I would add a week right in the middle of my thing and go do, yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I, I have been blessed in that way. But yeah, I travel a lot, a lot, yeah. That, that's kind of what I do. But I don't go, I don't go to, expect, I don't go to resort. And some of the places, Bolivia, I think I was, Cheaper living there than a toll. <laughs> I mean, which is, yeah, some of these places, they cost you nothing. You, you buy a full scale meal, it's the equivalent of three or four dollars. Okay? I don't, I don't stay in expensive hotels, okay? A lot of times I'm doing home stays, and that person, man, if you give them 50 bucks for a four night stay, they're, they're wow, you know? Um, yeah. So, yeah, I travel. COVID has, has stopped me from doing the international thing. And that's okay. I actually was coming back doing more US. Even though I've been in all 50 states, I want to spend more time. 
Um, yeah, how have you gone about having like all the connections around the world to have the homestays? To have the what? The homestays that you have, rather than staying in like a hostel oh. or a hotel, how have you made the relationships to um, have homestays? Most the homestays have been through G Adventures. I used the other ones to match, but G, I would have, if you have anything, gadventures.com. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who started this type of travel. The guy just said, there's a whole hole here that people want to travel, but I did one of those caravan things where, gosh, I was all American. We were on this great big bus. People show up late, and they wanted to eat American food, and things weren't like America, so I'm like, well, we're visiting this country. What the hell are you like? America, what, what do I do? And I couldn't take it. This is weird. And all of a sudden, G Adventures. And so you're used to it with eight or 12 people, a maximum of 16, so you're with a small group of people. They're, they're gonna stay at mom and pop because you want, they want the money to stay in country. So you're doing the mom and pop thing. Um, so I have friends all over the world now, okay? And now with new technology, they are the ones who got me on Facebook, saying, hey, Nick, we have content. Well, what do you mean, Facebook? I don't know. No, this is how we come, okay? And, and, and so now, I went to Australia. The first time there, I just kind of bobbed around myself. And, always, and if I'm an English speaking thing, I just get a car and travel like I do here. And, I'm driving the other side of the road, of course. Uh, but the second time I went there, okay, go here, I got a friend, here, I got a friend, here, I got a friend, and then they show you the local places. And you, the big tourist place, you go there too. But yeah, so now I got a place to stay because I bumped into them, you know, from 10 years ago on that trip to where were we at? Oh, yeah, we were in Colombia. Oh, okay, great. So yeah, but gadventures.com. And, and again, then you're kind of in a controlled situation, okay? They're doing the logistics. You, some of them, obviously, you're out in the bush, you're always with the same group. Could you, but in other places, if you're in, in a city, some people may want to go do this, some you can do that. But that, if, if you're a little leery, it's a very, and actually, most of the trips, three fourths of them are female on the trip. You know, they just feel a little more secure. Geadventure.com is really fantastic. Any place in the world, they, almost, they don't really do Western Europe because you can do that on yourself, you know, by yourself. So you talked about um, not being afraid to share your faith and that you have all these travels around the world. Um, I guess, have you had experiences where because you shared your faith, you felt like somebody came to Christ or had a closer relationship after you, after maybe a discussion with you or something? I would definitely say the lady on the ship when I went to the, on the polar bear expedition. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she was already a believer, but she was having some issues in her life. And I think she was, you know, to hell with this. And I think, again, it was not only, and I did mostly listening. And she just wanted to talk, and I, and actually, I think it was Holy Spirit giving me the words to use in that situation. I, I definitely think she, she came back to the faith. Yeah, I think for sure. Yeah. <coughs> for sure. So besides, like, listening, what are some other, like, key things you've learned of how to, like, yeah, like, talk about the faith with others? That might not be as aware of it. I, I sit there and again, I, I just say, man, we are, Jesus just blessed us by this food or by the family, by the group being together and all that. And someone, a lot of them will just kind of ignore and go on, but there will be one or two every once in a while say, say, oh yeah, Nick, and I know she's your necklace. Okay, so now I can start telling about that. Oh yeah, and did you have any spirits here? And then I can just mention maybe, gee, you, did I hear that you go up to Wisconsin sometime? Well, here's this place to go visit, the Saturation site. And you just, Usually it's almost them coming to me. They kind of see something, and, and again, I'm always using the word, Jesus smiling at us, or, wow, you know, Jesus will protect us if we go through this. You know, we're, we're, I, I have a friend, and, and uh, she's, uh, she's afraid of heights, but somehow she trusts me, I don't quite understand. And, uh, <laughs> so climbing up these things, I, I tend to know how far I can quite get her, and plus get her back, and she just kind of trusts it. But I said, Jesus has this for us. You know, we, we will be okay. You are extending your boundaries. You are showing faith. And okay, yeah, some of that faith is me, but you're showing that you're doing this. And it, it just kind of goes from there. And, and I am not, I have no problem now if we're, we're sitting here someplace and, uh, uh, guys, I'm going to say this, this prayer. And I do it. And, and actually, I was almost, I'm, I'm, my last name is Puppelman. So we did a Puppelman heritage tour to, to Germany uh, just before COVID. And uh, the Puppelman still own the farm from 1248. It's great, but it was a great tour. But here are all these people, like second, third, fourth cousins from the Port Miami Minister area, and we were all traveling. So I didn't know most of these people. And I just kind of went with six of these people to a kind of a medium, medium to upscale thing. And here was this guy, Jeff Borchers. I don't know if you know Jeff. Uh, Jeff Borchers. And we're sitting there in this German restaurant. He said, let's hold hand and say a prayer. And we did. And the Germans didn't condemn us. They didn't. You know, wow. 
wow, they, I think they were impressed. Okay, so I could be sitting in the Dutch meal in Minster, having some beverages, and, and the food comes, hey, that's safe prayer. And some people say, yeah, other people plant the seed. Just do it. And again, first of all, I was kind of, you know, I don't care if they don't like it. <laughs> Maybe you plant the seed. Maybe that person who I didn't even see sitting back is, wow, look at that. Mom, why, why, why did they pray? That's the Holy Spirit's job. <laughs> so, yeah. Have you found, like, in all the places you've gone around the world, have you always been able to find a Catholic church to attend Mass, or has that been challenging in some places? Uh, it would be challenging in some places. Uh, Latin America, no issue. I mean, they, they are 90% Christian, and they're practicing Christians. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you go down there. Uh, Asia, yeah, uh, Czech kind of Catholic church. Or, and even on some of these tours, in some, okay, we're out in the bush, so obviously not them. Um, so, so no, on those, I just figured, and I've never, I guess maybe I'm supposed to ask a priest for dispensation. I just figured, Jesus said, I think you're just, uh, you, 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 can't, you can't go find one right now. But even if I'm not going to be there on a Sunday and we happen to be in this community and I see a church, I'll just slide in for five minutes. Just kneel down a little bit. Okay, I'm not going to be here Sunday. Either. So, so you can't, yeah, certain, certain areas, uh, a lot of places in Africa, I would not be able to find one either. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, any place you go in Latin America, you're pretty sure to find them. I'll ask another one. Yeah, <laughs> um, Nick, would you just offer tips to like anyone who is interested in traveling or having experiences similar to yours? What kind of tips would you offer to the younger generation as where to how to get started in something like that? First of all, probably if you're if you're a little leery of things, just just do some soul things in the U.S. You know, kind kind of out and a little further outside. I believe in stretching boundaries. Even when I got the little kids, stretch the boundary to here. You know, you don't want to fall off the cliff. And I do have family members. Nick, you remember you got my kids this weekend. Yeah, I got that. And the kids all said, Nick, is this one? Don't tell mom about that. <laughs> 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 yeah, Volunteer at Bruckner Nature Center. I get a major person, all these little kids, and, and uh, sometimes Bruckner has taken me aside, Nick. Okay, I hear you. The kids came back alive. <laughs> but uh, but uh, uh, do, do some do some little bit of soul travel in the U.S. just so you get a little bit more comfortable, and obviously then you're not going to run into a language problem. Uh, you can get in trouble in the U.S. just as much, maybe even more so in some other places. But you would get a comfort feeling. Okay, maybe start feeling things. But if, in fact, you say, wow, that's, that's outside my zone right now, and I don't really have so many comfort, geadventures.com. Uh, you're in a controlled situation. All you have to do is get there. They'll have a meeting spot. Okay, you get there, and, and, and that, that, is probably, that is probably what I would recommend for someone who did. I, again, I'm running all this problem. It's okay for me to go out and mess up and kill myself, but I can't do that to somebody else. Okay, so, so, and there's our other, the Imagine Traveler, well, I think they've been bought, gadventures.com, just check their thing, and you can go there, almost everybody's going to know how to, speak. everybody else in the world, when they travel, they almost know English, okay, at least your guide, your guide will know English, and so that will give you a real flavor for doing that, that, that would be my best recommendation, and there are places that you can go, that are, even if, you know, if you don't have the money to do that, some of them are pretty cheap, okay, now, obviously, you're flying over to Asia, you got the airplane fare and all this, if you just get down into, uh, to uh, Central America, um, flights aren't that expensive to get down there, and and, and the, the cost of the uh, you you can probably get a, a seven to nine day vacation for like twelve or thirteen hundred bucks, and then your airfare on top of it, and then you, you'll have to buy some meals. It depends. Do you want to go down to a, a sit down restaurant, or do you really? I can usually spot on on these who is on a budget. They just don't have. This is maybe the trip of a lifetime. They don't have. I will tend to go to them because I'm just happy going in this grocery store, getting this chicken, and sitting out here as we're going there, okay? And plus, then you can have the one-on-one -on -one conversation or something. Yes. So you can really curtail your, your cost, too, if that's an issue. But jadventures.com. Uh, that, that, that should be my answer. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I thank you for listening. I enjoy sharing this stuff. I'm trying to do more and more things. And again, share your faith. Show it. Show it out there. Even if you're maybe embarrassed, show it out there. And every once in a while, you don't know who you might have impacted. And Jesus loved you even more then.